it's all about bringing the two cultures of, um, of science and the humanities together, and that's what today's panel is about. And we, you know, we live in a scientific technological world, and we feel that um, artists need to take on these subjects. And part of the effort here is to um, is to show that this material can make for uh, uh, both successful and entertaining um, mainstream films, as well as as very uh, interesting artistic works. It, it occurs to me that there's a real opening for filmmakers to and for storytellers to begin to understand the science that you do. We, we focus on issues that we think are very important. We focus on, on health care, so uh, engineering viruses and proteins of them for trying to, to diagnose uh, ovarian cancer at a much uh, earlier stage. And we, we try to get the, the word out um, on that. And I think people are, are very, very interested in it, but I think that, that some of the other, the other stories are, might be more exciting. <laughs> There's probably no part of life where one has less reasoning than in romantic love. Uh, uh, huge parts of the brain literally shut down. Uh, uh, and one of the questions that I ask people before I put them into the brain scanner is, what do you not like about your partner? And they can list it, but they sweep that aside and just focus on what they do. The, the brain system is way below the cortex, uh, evolved long before uh, modern man, and, um, and reasoning is not one of the great, uh, its great parts. When you're taking science and incorporating it into drama, you can't explain the science. I mean, that's not the point of what you're doing. And you clearly need to make some hard choices about what you're going to try to explore. How important is it to keep the science accurate, if not complete? In, in our movie, there's definitely, you know, some cheating. Um, I, I have a friend who, you know, designs robots, and I had her read the script, and she's like, well, <laughs> you know. But I think that the idea was at least to kind of take those robots as inspiration and at least within the film, you know, try to keep it consistent, you know, make sure that there was a logic to what was going on. My hope is that when it's ever possible and it's feasible with respect to time and cost, which may be never, but <laughs> when it's possible is to get the science right. And if you can just a little bit, if it's possible, allow the public and particularly kids to see any part of the scientific process as it really it happens, um, not as you, you read about it or it's portrayed in, in most movies, to feel that moment where you actually discover something that no one's ever known before. Being a scientist in real life is really a lot more fun than it's often portrayed in film because you get to dream of these ways in which the world could change and through hard work and and some probably was not unsimilar to the creative process in filmmaking through allowing yourself to, um, to throw out a lot of dumb ideas. You come across a few brilliant ideas that actually manage to change the world. As scientists have a story too. I mean, we have a hypothesis and we do research for years and years and years and finally we come to the hypothesis and then we design you know, the, the experiments to see whether we're right or wrong. And the one thing that we seem to have that the filmmaker doesn't have is that moment of truth when we actually figure out whether we're right or wrong and where we were wrong and, and why we were wrong. And That's called other opening direction? weekend for us. <laughs> <laughs> There's an incredible sort of unspoken partnership between scientists and filmmakers um, because, uh, you know, film is often inspired by great science and then there are times where great science is inspired by films, where people have dared to dream of things that hadn't been dreamt of. The, the science um, in so many films is, is, is we're, what we're depicting is an impulse. You know? And if the impulse is true, then I hope scientists can sort of get on board, as well as audiences broadly. And I think you're doing something valuable in terms of the dialogue if the impulse is true. And we know the impulse to create these caretaker machines is true. In my case, I know we know the impulse to use machines to cut costs, to transform labor relations. I know that impulse is true. Now, are they going to be blue light up cables? No, but that looks cool. You, you should do our Q&A panels. You're a lot better at talking about it. <laughs> I, I'm available. Sounds good. <laughs> and with optogenetics, you actually can control turning on neurons with light. Like wow. this. <laughs> how about that? That's already, that's already, that's already been done with, with France. So. Look how I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but, anyways.